Hey there, Chelsea here, Monarch Alley. I am a vintage lover, thrifter, and part-time reseller. And today I have my weekend what sold video for you where I go over what sold over the past weekend. I work full-time and have two kids, so I do this part-time, but I'm actually really happy with the sales that I had over the weekend, specifically on eBay, but we will get to that, we will get to that. I use List Perfectly, which is a cross-listing Chrome extension, and it helps me to get my listings to Poshmark, Mercari, Facebook Marketplace, and eBay, and it's brought me a lot of success, I have to say it. If you are interested in upping your game and trying out cross-listing, I highly recommend List Perfectly, and I do have an affiliate link below that'll give you a 30% off discount. If during this video you hear general household chaos, well, it's because I'm actually making this video while my husband is cooking dinner and the kids are running around. So yeah, let's hope that it goes well. <laughs> So as many have stated, sales have been a little slow all around. So I decided to run some promotions in my eBay store and Facebook Marketplace store. And Facebook Marketplace was completely dead. Spoilers, I have no sales from Facebook Marketplace and I really haven't had any in a long time. So I am doing something wrong. If you have any advice on that, let me know. I used to like really rock it on Facebook Marketplace. I used to still make occasionally a sale, especially when I run a promotion but just nothing. And what's also frustrating is that I have not been able to cross list on Facebook Marketplace. It just gives me an error. I don't even remember what it says, but I can't figure out what the solution is. It has been several days of being unable to cross list to Facebook Marketplace. So maybe that has something to do with this not making sales over there thing. I don't know, but I ran a 20% off promotion over there. Nothing. I ran a 20% off sale also on eBay and got a ton of attention on my items. So let's jump into it. The first item that I have to share is a Hannah Anderson uh, kids t-shirt. It's a Vice like surfing t-shirt so cool this shirt sold for $12 on eBay and the buyer did pay for shipping as well which is nice after eBay fees I make about $9.50 next is a pair of heavily distressed um, bullhead shorts I've been sitting on these for a while um, I think probably since last summer so when someone sent me an offer for $16 on these shorts I went ahead and accepted it I do think I could have got like the $20 mark maybe if I had relisted one more time before summer but I just wanted to move inventory and I definitely think accepting some early offers helped me get sales later on so the bullhead shorts was an eBay sale I can't remember if I already said that or not and the buyer did pay for shipping as well after eBay fees I make about $13 on the shorts and on Friday still, yet another eBay sale. This one is really funny. Um, so I'm actually in this intense process of like, okay, it's not intense, but I'm in the process of redecorating my three-year-old's room. He's about to turn three, like actually a week from March 14th today that I'm filming this. And I don't know, I feel like he deserves like a little bit more of a big boy aesthetic. So I'm making like a gallery wall for him and putting some cool art in his room. And it hit me that I had this like really cool vintage pennant that would be like a neat decor item for his room. And I kid you not, I had that thought and the next day the item sold on eBay after like crickets, 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 no one ever caring about this pennant, it sold. I think I picked it up at a local thrift shop for about like 25 cents, I'm not even kidding. And I sold it for $15 and the buyer paid shipping. What's funny about this one is that I really wanted to ship it flat because it is vintage. It's already got some creasing going on. So I didn't want to like fold it up in a box and have the buyer disappointed when they get it. So I actually should have taken a picture. Wait, I did take a picture. I'll put it in here. I actually packaged it like in a flattened box that I just cut down and tape the edges of. SPS picked it up, so I guess it'll be fine, but I don't know what the buyer's gonna think about this. Hopefully they will appreciate the extra concern to keep their felt pennant flat. Next is an item that sold on Poshmark actually, which I did have a few Poshmark sales. This is a little pair of Cookie Monster booty shoes that are for a little itty bitty baby. I think maybe they were six to 12 months, but they were small. And these are something that were gifted to us and my son never wore. So I just have had them listed for the longest time. So these finally sold for $5 and it was to a guest buyer on Poshmark because it was an outright sale and their name like said guest in it. But yeah, after Poshmark fees, I make only 205 on those shoes. That's over 50% take on Poshmark. That's crazy talk. But I'm moving inventory, which is great. And I think sales like that really help get things going with the algorithm, the mysterious algae rhythm um, in <laughs> your closets. That is a modern Space Jam reference, if you didn't get that. So I actually had another Poshmark sale that same day, a pair of Levi's that were from my all men's thrift haul. Um, these were like a less popular uh, style. I kind of got them to experiment with them. They weren't like vintage Levi's or anything like that. But these gray Levi's, they sold for $20. Now I did send an offer to Liker, so Poshmark took their fee, but then also I had to pay for that shipping discount that I offered. 
These sold for $20 and I made $13.32. I've been talking about it for weeks, but I think I'm finally, finally ready to do an update on my men's thrift haul. So make sure to subscribe today, watch the men's only thrift haul, and then pretty soon you'll get to see a video of how those items actually performed. Kind of an experiment for me to just really uh, test out a new category and see what sells. It's been fun and I definitely plan on continuing to look at the men's department more. All right, we have more eBay sales. This next item to sell was something that I got for free from a friend. It's a faded glory white uh, v-neck cable knit sweater. Those are probably honestly more keywords than I even put in my listing because this is an old listing and I don't know if I ever refreshed it, but it did sell for $10 on eBay. And after eBay fees, I make about $7.50. Another fun eBay sale was this Shrek donkey plush. This is kind of a smaller plush. It like maybe could fit in my hand um, standing up, but it was vintage and it was kind of cool. So I was excited to pick this up and I wasn't sure what I was going to get for it, but I ended up selling it for $12. I feel really good about that. So after eBay fees, I make $9.50 on that little vintage plush. And that one was fun and brought me a lot of joy to like uh, pick it up, have it for a little bit and then get it to a new home. That is without a doubt my favorite part of doing this is that I get to kind of rescue some of these items from the thrift and get them to buyers that will really appreciate them. I just think it's so cute. The next sale is a pair of cut from the cloth jeans. I think these were an offer that someone sent to me. Yes. Um, so someone sent an offer for $15 on these jeans and I was going to counter, but honestly the price difference from where I had it listed to what they offered was so close that I just felt like I should accept. So, um, I went ahead and accepted. I just don't want to play that game of like bargaining for an extra dollar or two. It wasn't worth it to me. I want to make the sale because these have been sitting a bit. And like I said, we got to stir up that algorithm a little bit. So these cut from the cloth jeans sold for $15 and after Poshmark fees, I make $12. I can't remember if these jeans were given to me or if I thrifted them. I will say I got several pairs of cut from the cloth jeans from a friend who has given me um, a good amount of free inventory over the years. And so these may have been hers or I may have picked them up because I remembered selling them in the past. What I will say about this brand of jeans is that they sell okay for me or they used to do better, but they sell okay for me, but I wouldn't spend too much money on these jeans. It seems like the average selling rate is around that 20, 15 to $20 mark. Hey friends, sorry for a change in angle. I was editing this video and realized that I missed a sale. So I wanted to pop in this polo, wait, was it polo Ralph Lauren? Oh no, now I'm forgetting. But this awesome thermal sweatshirt that honestly was so comfy, I thought about keeping. This sold also on eBay for $20. After eBay fees, I make about $17 and yet again, the buyer did pay for shipping. Uh, shipping was about $1.50 more than I expected it to be. So really my profits are a little lower, but I paid about $4 for the sweatshirt. So I'm all good. My final sale was actually made on Mercari and it's a pair of Eddie Bauer flannel lined uh, women's khakis. They looked so cozy and warm. I was super tempted to keep them, but I didn't. I flipped them. I wanted to get a little bit more for these because it's a good brand and they were flannel lined. But again, someone sent me a reasonable offer that I just couldn't refuse. <laughs> so these sold for $17. After Mercari fees, I made $14.51. And I think throughout this what sold, I was saying the buyer paid shipping, the buyer paid shipping. Um, for every single listing, the buyer did pay for shipping. So that did not come out of my profits. And that's just how I choose to, I guess, run my business. I don't generally offer free shipping. Every once in a while, I'll do it if like it just makes sense, particularly for media mail or for items that like the Mercari shipping labels just seems obnoxiously high, which happens sometimes. Um, then I'll just like work that estimated shipping cost into my price. But my biggest fear is that I'll like accept some offer to get things moving and forget that I offered free shipping. So I'm really working to be consistent in my listings and I do charge shipping. I try to keep it reasonable. Sometimes I undercharge shipping by a dollar or two to make it like an enticing shipping rate, like a not too steep shipping rate. And then I just kind of eat that cost and like work it into my pricing structure. I would be super curious to hear what you do if you offer free shipping for people or if you charge for shipping and what that looks like for you. Another interesting thing is about I made all those eBay sales and I was just assuming that this was from my 20% off promotion that I was running and I had the promotion ending March 13th. So typically in the days before the promotion ends is when I see an uptick in sales, which is always so exciting. However, when I go back and look at my promotion in my eBay stats, it says that I only made one sale through the promotion. So I really don't understand what that means. I need to go through and look at that because I made several sales over the weekend. I don't know if running the promotion gave me extra visibility, 
but why wouldn't the people get the 20% off? Like, I'm kind of confused about what that means. So if you have any insight to that as to how do you make a sale on eBay while running a promotion that isn't tw like your discount, I'm not sure how that worked out. I'm not mad about it by any means, but that's what I was kind of like chalking my success up to. In fact, I was kind of chatting on Instagram with Becky Park on Poshmark. She was saying the same thing, like she had a promotion and she's getting all these eBay sales. But when I look at my stats, it says I made one $12 sale through the promotion. And I can't even figure out how to know which sale that was because I my brain is not working. It's quite the Monday. So anyway, if you have info on that too, I really appreciate it. So friends, that is what I have for you today. I really appreciate your time. I know I teased it in last week's video, but work is picking up for me so much. I have not been able to do the thrift haul that I really want to do. So I'm really hoping that this week I'm taking a couple days off while the kids are on spring break. I'm hoping that that means I can record a thrift haul for you. What I'm actually going to do is start a new little mini series where um, I made a $20 Facebook marketplace local flip. I got the $20 in cash and then I spent that $20 at a church sale where everything was priced for a dollar. So in my next haul, I'm actually going to show you the 20 items that I picked up with that $20 and somehow figure out how we're going to track that and see how much profit I make. I don't know if I just want to track those items selling or if I want to see how quickly I can get to like a thousand dollars. I would love your insight on what you would like to see um, but either way I'm really excited to kind of take some of these thrift items and track them along the way and see how far I can take twenty dollars. That's kind of the, the idea that we're going with here. Drop a comment below. Let me know what kind of video series you would like to see. And hey, we'll see if we can make it happen. All right. I'll see you in the next one, friends. Bye.